This is to introduce you to some added features for Solomon. We're calling this group of features Solomon Plus. It includes our popular sidekick spreadsheets that are now coded into the application. So you start up here with a UAD quality rating of 4, let's say. And for a multiplier, we want to have a combination of things. First of all, um, any modifications to the cost, such as repetitive builds or mason reconstruction or built in an outlying area. Let's just say we're going to look at a house that's in a subdivision, so a Q4 has a minus 9 for the repetitive build. We scroll down right into our um, list of zip code multipliers down to Minnesota. I'm in 55123, so I use 12 here, subtract 9, so I'm going to use 3 as my multiplier. And you'll remember your multipliers as you uh, get used to this. So here we go with a 3. Um, I'm going to use economic life of 60 for this house. Uh, I, I believe in using the, uh, the recommended economic life of uh, the cost manual. Let's say it's got 15 years effective age as my estimate when I click calculate. Uh, the first calculation is remaining economic life, so 60 minus 15 is 45. Uh, the percent of depreciation is 25 percent, right? 15 divided by 60. And that means we have a contributory value of 75 percent. You can see it over here in the chart. So at 75 percent of replacement cost in this uh, multiplier, we have a gross living area adjustment of $71. And here's the rest of the adjustments all the way down the line. This column assumes equal depreciation, so that's why it's EQD. Uh, we know that the house does not depreciate equally because uh, within 15 years, you're already on your second coat of paint. Um, carpet is worn or has been replaced. You know, appliance, built-in appliances might be re, re, uh, approaching their economic life. So we've got this column where you can uh, either go with my default settings. These are the ones I use in my market in Minnesota. This might be quite a bit different for you. But for a house this age, um, we have appraiser input from uh, a big group of appraisers that use Solomon that thought as a group uh, this number should be 63. And I think they the developed that by looking at the grid and how well 71 worked. They thought it was a little bit too high. So 63% of 60 um, so roughly 36, 37 years for the economic life of the GLA, not the house, but just the GLA that has that short-lived effect of carpet, paint, 20-year um, roof, um, appliances that are built in that don't last forever, an HVAC system, you know, all the, all the different things that, that wear out more quickly. So notice that we've also um, uh, hit uh, basement finish with 50% to result in a $13 per foot adjustment. I think that's due to carpet wearing out fast and paneling and ceiling tile and things that make a basement finish that last less than 60 years. Uh, here's an example for the fireplace. A second fireplace, even though it's not uh, depreciating physically, it has functional obsolescence. If there's only one fireplace, it might be worth 2500 but a second fireplace in my market is worth about half. Uh, same with basement bathrooms. They're worth about half. More, more so for functional than any other reason. But these are the calculations. I use this tool over here. Let's say we've got a 1,500 square foot house. If I want to bracket GLA by 20%, I'll use uh, 1,200 to 1,800 in my search. If I want to bracket by 25%, I'll go down to uh, like 1,100 to 1,900 if I'm uh, having trouble finding comps. So that's Sidekick um, on our new web application uh, options. So you've all seen Solomon adjustment, that's the same. Solomon cost is the same. Solomon cost new is the same. Solomon site is the same. Solomon manufactured has not changed. Market time is the same. Secondary data, this will save you a lot of time. Um, here we're using the, the concept called wisdom of crowds and uh, you can read about that. Um, here's our website that, that has our survey results. I think on that website there's also a link to something called Wisdom of Crowds. I'll also include a link down below so you can uh, view that video. But we start with the sale price of a comparable property. Let's say it's $300,000 and there's 10000 in concessions. Now in my market the concessions typically do not make up part of what I consider uh, market value so I subtract the concessions. So when I click 
uh, C secondary data results, um, the market value is shown here, 290. And then all of these adjustments, whether it's for bedroom count, central air, in-ground pools, um, condition, quality, all of these adjustments are based on survey results from appraisers. Uh, the, the, the appraisers are scattered around the country. Um, you'd have to really understand wisdom of crowds to see why that makes sense. But the general idea is that many non-expert, in other words, no geographic competence, many non-expert opinions are more accurate than one expert opinion. And that's uh, Sir Francis Galton from England back in like 1906 that, that discovered that. And it's, um, it's documented well outside of the appraisal world, obviously. So secondary data, very quick way to use secondary data. And again, secondary data is used to support other forms of adjustments or other methods. It's not a primary method, but it's interesting to look and see, maybe help, help give you some guidance. Uh, the next one. This is the new sensitivity analysis tool. This has been a lot of help for people. Um, what it does is it helps you understand the correlation between um, an independent variable and adjusted sale prices. That's the dependent variable. So let's say we want to look at site size. It's a difficult adjustment to extract sometimes. But uh, now that we have uh, a sensitivity analysis tool, uh, we, if, we, if we see a correlation between site size and adjusted sale price, it's, it's possible that we should make an adjustment for that. So let's say 12,000 square feet is comp one, and it adjusted to 350. Comp two has 9,000 square feet, and it adjusted to um, 347. Now if I click this little trigger right here, it will show that um, we've got a $1 adjustment, and that makes sense because we've got a change of $3,000 and a change of 3,000 square feet, so a dollar a foot. But um, as you know, more data is better than less data, so let's put in comp three. Let's say it's a 15,000 square foot site, and it has $360,000 adjusted sale price. Now we show an adjustment of around $2 per foot. Notice here we have this value, this R hat 2. That means R squared, R to the power of 2. Um, 0.91, that means the, the coefficient of correlation. 91% of the change in adjusted sale price is due to the change in site size. So this is a pretty strong correlation. The adjustment is around $2. Maybe you have a fourth comp that has a site size of 8,000 square feet and also adjusts to 360. Click Analysis. And now what we see is a very low correlation. You would probably not be making a site size adjustment here, which is pretty obvious, I guess, if there's a 15,000 and an 8,000 foot site that both have adjusted values of 360. But this is just a way to document it for your work file. You can take a screenshot of this, uh, keep it in your work file, or if it's important, uh, put it in your report. Sensitivity analysis is pretty versatile. It's also uh, pretty useful for an age adjustment. So let's say we have a 20-year-old uh, house that adjusts to $400,000. And then we have a 30-year-old house that adjusts to 395 and an 85 year old house that adjusts to 380. What we're seeing is that there's about a $300 age adjustment and there's a very strong correlation so you'd probably want to make this age adjustment. Now interestingly we can uh, eliminate these two and just click this little trigger. And, and this is using adjusted pairs, right? So we've got just two um, properties. We naturally get a 100% correlation because we're saying that there's only, the only difference is, is age. So you can also use this for adjusted pairs. Now, last, we've got our new forecast tool. So let's look at that for a minute. It's used for acreage. Uh, so let's say we've got a three-acre site 
at um, eighty-five thousand dollars. We're, we're, our, our subject is four acres. That's what we're trying to find. So we enter four over here under site size. We've got a five acre site. Oh, five acre site that is uh, sold for $94,000. And we've got a six acre site that's sold for just a little bit more, 95,000. And a uh, 10 acre site at $100,000. Click Forecast, and we get an inferred site value of, uh, of a four-acre site of $89,000, $90,000. Pretty close to this, uh, to halfway between the 85 and the 94. But this gives you, um, again, the R square is 0 .8, 0 0.855, so 86% of the change in sale price is due to a change in acres and that's what we're after we want to see um, how do we get this $89 site uh, estimate right opinion of site value well I hope these tools will make you more productive and confident in your work check out our website uh, with links to training videos free downloads and other resources that will help you develop your appraisal skills